there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. This week, there's a fever in there. The 215 crew tries to land in congested waters Ahoy! and get their plane back out. Watch out They're gonna twist it in. They can. A rookie pilot gets thrown a curveball. <laughs> and Buffalo Joe lays down the law. I have an obligation not to send this 20-year-old kid home in a body bag. Boy. It's the beginning of a big journey for Buffalo Airways. Good luck, we'll see. You. Are we actually going somewhere? Yeah, we're going. We're going. It's uh, things are looking up here. We're well overdue. Hopefully our weather holds and we can get this thing done today. Captain Justin Simley and his crew will be heading to the other side of the world. After you, I just with this plane, a CL-215 water bomber. It was never designed for more than a short hop. Now, the first leg of its journey begins with the long haul over the Rockies. Boots up, going on, and I got the time for all of I think we got her all in, yeah. But there's one thing missing. It's gonna roll back like two minutes. Mechanic Corey Dodd almost forgot an essential piece of equipment. Approximately since about 1993. My mom gave it to me. And so far to this date, every time I've had the frog, we've never crashed or had anything bad happen to us. So it must have some luck in it. Or it's just the uh, superior piloting skills. Somehow I doubt that. <laughs> I don't know, I got to put my money on the frog. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I will too. I'll go with the frog. And this is a complete adventure for all of us. I mean, this is actually something that I was quite excited about right from the beginning. It's, it's totally different. The water bomber's on its way to its new owners in South Korea. When we started looking at doing this job, we were going to fly the airplane there. It just wasn't possible. Clear takeoff, runway 28, take her 281. All set? Yeah, I think we're good here. So Justin and co-pilot Nigel Clark will first fly this plane to Vancouver, British Columbia. This 1,600-kilometer journey over the Rocky Mountains to the west coast will push the limits of an aircraft designed for short firefighting runs. V1, my fault. Air 6, 3R, we're okay. For the first time ever, Buffalo will now attempt to load a 215 onto a cargo ship heading across the Pacific Ocean. It's never been done before, so I'm not sure how it's going to go. They can't afford any damage because Buffalo won't get paid until the plane is delivered. So you want to do everything in your power to keep it from getting damaged because you know it's going to be Joe freaking out. After takeoff, start. All right. And we're on our way. These days, Joe's already got a lot on his mind. After a recent series of fatal plane crashes at neighboring airlines, Joe's been on a major safety campaign. And today, he's seen some major carelessness in the way the crew's been prepping his planes and handling his equipment. Joe's called everyone in, from greenest rampy to seasoned pilot to lay down the law. We've got a problem that's not being solved, and maybe you guys can solve it, maybe you can't. Maybe we'll send some young guy home in a body bag to his mother. I walked out of Turtle Bell and Hay River this morning. I mean, I can hear the distinct sound of a chalk beating another chalk. You got one engine running, the chalk's running. 
Yesterday, I had a problem because the same guy was giving a signal to pull the APU, and he runs as hard as he can, slipping and sliding, snowing, black night, 20 years old, never been in the north before, he's out of Toronto. He slides underneath the, there and starts pulling the APU down. Then I go and ask him, who trained you to do, to do that? They're not uh, properly schooled, I thought, in the care and control of the airplane on the ramp. They could hurt themselves. You got to realize there's spinning propellers. There's slippery ice. I was born and raised here. I know what it's like to be in the cold and the dark in a snowstorm. Aviation like the sea, like mariners, you pass your knowledge on. People don't pass it on. They want to hold it to themselves. Almost to I see a competition on the ramp, I can look better than him. They seem to want to hold their knowledge or, or be protective of it, which is in aviation very, very dangerous. And if you don't want to train each other, do yourselves a favor. Don't listen to me. Don't put up my bullshit. Get the hell out of here. Now I have an obligation not to send this 20-year-old kid home in a body bag. The young co-pilots and rampies have a different theory. Joe seemed to think that everybody is so competitive here that we don't want to train other people so that we look better. But there's not a lot of time. Everything's so rushed. It's always the same thing. It's always rushing. Like, everyone rushes, rushes, rushes. And it's, you know, that's not what he's fault. It's just how everyone's mentality is. We can say we want to change. We can try and change, but it really never happens. But big changes are coming for Rampy David Alexander. Changes that will put him right under Buffalo Joe's scrutiny. Picking up a little, eh? Yeah, yeah should be all right. These are big wings, too. They can take a bit of ice. In the skies over British Columbia, the 215 is closing in on Vancouver. And Corey's lucky frog seems to be working. Yeah, just the way I like it. Everything uh, hey, okay The green frogs having a, having a good scenic tour. 3,000 for tanker 281. Just follow along this shoreline here. Uh, good job. You got it, Matt, Jim. They're just a landing away from a perfect day. Everything was just too good. So something has to go terribly wrong. Vancouver Harbor, it's uh, tanker 281 with you just coming up on point three. Nothing we ever do goes as planned. Tanker 281, Harbor Tower, Roger, and uh, what are your intentions? Our intentions are to land uh, towards uh, Mosquito Creek on the north shore there. But they're trying to touch down in some of the most congested airspace in the country. Tanker 281, traffic at Point Atkinson, currently heading southbound, Beaver 1500 feet. Tanker 281, the Beaver is about a mile and a half below level. There's a Beaver right there. Still got the otter. Yep, got And the sky is only the first of Justin's worries. There's a lot of harbor traffic there, float planes going in and out of there, container ships going back and forth, and, the, and those container ships, they're moving. We just got to keep an eye out for traffic. There's the sea bus got going it. right in there. So I would do a turn. Uh, one coming across there. There's one behind. And the other guy right there. We've got a tug over there, but I am. Check your water there, make sure there's no logs or anything in the water. Right now, Justin is facing every pilot's worst nightmare. We got a boat down here, I gotta turn left here. Ship. Nowhere to land. Okay, now we got some, okay, we got a, a freighter coming in. In Vancouver, Justin Simley's desperate for a break in traffic to find room to land a CL-215. Tanker 281, traffic is turning left for the Lionsgate Bridge. Remain south of him at all times. So just give yourself four seconds, Otter. We got a boat down here. Okay, he, which direction? He's going this way. I'll land past here. Yeah. Justin wants a kilometer and a half of open water. 100 knots in the slide now. Boat clock, please. But he's not going to find it here. And you're 95. It's 85. 85 and 150 feet. One 
Thumbs up. Yeah. Mega 2, 8 1 is on the water this time. The water bomber is already attracting attention from other pilots. What's going on? We got a fire on the North Shore or something? <laughs> Attention 31, this is our clearance frequency when you're taxiing for departure. Yeah, actually this uh, will be our last flight. They're uh, getting the plane ready to put on a boat, so... Oh, okay, thank you. That was very interesting. Normally you'd fly where you're going. Tell us where you're headed on the boat. Uh, the boat is uh, on route to Korea. Okay, which explains that's quite a journey. Otherwise, for you guys, very interesting. And anyway, all the best. But now, all the boats that made landing a challenge are surrounding the plane. We just gotta keep an eye out for traffic. We are kind of in a shipping lane. That sea bus is going in, that one's going in. And we've got a tug and another tug. The freighter behind us? Yeah. Sure. And back over tower, tanker 281. And we've got this uh, freighter coming in. Uh, no, we're just trying to decide which way. I guess we should go behind him. That's up to you. Once you're on the water for us, you're considered a boat, so it's really up to you. If you want to head this way, you're welcome to do so. Got to turn. Great. Oh, okay. go to the The cargo ships, they're huge. Just floating around that 2D on the water is like, holy crap. These things, I mean, if we get run into they're, they're not even going to stop. They're just going to run right over us. Moving very. Oh, shit, we don't have the wind with us here. As a plane, the 215 is incredibly nimble. Come on, baby, come around now. As a boat, not so much. She's not coming around very good there. With no rudder in the water, the 215 depends on its propellers to maneuver. It's not like a boat. You can't just steer it. It needs a lot of space to turn. It's a big ass ship. It sure is. We get her around here. There, now she comes. So the crew is waiting for a tugboat to give them a tow to a nearby marina where they'll prep the plane for the next stage of his journey. The heck is all right, guys. At least that was the plan. I don't see the tug yet. Anybody out there in company? So we're waiting for the tugboat to come out, and it's not coming out. You know, we're just kind of getting a little more antsy, because now we're just floating around over here, you know, in everybody's way. I wonder if they've run into a problem, you know? Without a tow, the 215 is a sitting duck. Back up in Yellowknife, Mikey McBrien is dealing with a problem of his own. So Chris Barton in Hay River just quit. Chris Barton phoned me up and said that he was leaving, so, you know, that was a real blow, and, and you know, usually at Buffalo when it rains, it pours. The resignation leaves Mikey with a severe shortage of DC-3 co-pilots to fly the daily passenger flight with Buffalo Joe. Joe, yes. Hey, Dad, it's Mikey. Yeah. Uh, Chris Barton quit. Oh, did he? Yeah. What that really leaves us with is um, no DC-3 co-pilots. We'll think about it overnight um, because whoever we pick is going to be your guy. Yeah, your Hay River guy, so. Who's the next one we're training? I mean, we're getting the transmitter real quick. We really had to look around the hangar and see who's next, and uh, we really, uh, we really took a gamble. But uh, we're thinking David Alexander, you know, our, our, our Toronto boy. When David Alexander showed up over a year ago, fresh from Toronto, no one was betting on him. A lot older than uh, than Hay River. That's for sure. He must be the new guy. That scar's gonna kill you around here. Kelly. 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 Nice, nice to meet, you. meet you. Welcome to Buffalo. He ain't gonna last. <laughs> He's too frilly. What's that? He's already thinking it's cold. He won't last here. Shit, no. <laughs> it's cold. It's plus fucking one in November in Yellowknife, and he thinks it's gold. Holy shit, man. Good luck. But David did last, quietly plugging away under the radar, hardly getting noticed. You never really want to show how much it actually means to you, right? But, you know, 15 months on the ramp. Kind of like, you know, how long am I actually going to be on this ramp for? So, Damon, did you, uh, did you hear about Barton? And with his big chance finally here, David has a surprise for Mikey. How was your training on the three? Uh, pretty good. How about sim time? 60, 70, maybe. 
in the simulator upstairs in the school. Yeah. Really? Well, wow, frick, that's pretty good. I was thinking you were going to say like five. And he's got 65 hours in the sim. 65 hours. Like, I barely even get 20 minutes before getting bored. David spent so much time on it, he's become the unofficial sim instructor. Okay, that's weather's good. So, brief me on a takeoff. If it's there for you to use, you might as well use it. So it's 52 inches we'll use today? Yeah. Right seat takeoff. But no simulator can prepare any pilot for sharing a cockpit with Buffalo Joe. Slowly kicking in that. I should get my shit together and make sure I know my shit. In Vancouver, the water bomber crew is still fighting to dodge harbor traffic. Got a turn now, pass on his, on his left on our right side. There it is, there it is. Shut her down. Ahoy! It's pretty exciting. There comes our tug right now. Right here. The tug is towing the plane to a nearby marina, but no marina is designed for a boat like this. Now we just got to fit a 93-foot airplane in a 78-foot opening. Somehow, they have to squeeze the 215 through this narrow breakwater. The closer we get, is the, the more uh, the, the panic is going to go up here. Because the airplane wouldn't fit, we actually had to uh, somehow lift the wing that was going to be over the dock. Maybe we want as much weight over Yeah, no, I want to be right up outside. If they can get one wing high enough, they might be able to raise the pontoon over the barrier. When we get close, he's going to give the tagline for the people, and me and Nigel and Matt will stand on that wing. Yeah, yeah. well, let's do it. We got up on the wing to make sure that the, uh, the right side pontoon was high enough to clear the uh, concrete dock on the right side. How do you want to control it as we go through there, the wings? Uh, that'll be the only problem. I don't really know, but let's get a little closer. Go. Pretty nervous right now. Let's see what happens. As slow as we can go. Yeah, we just gotta watch his nose here. I mean, boats, you, know, you can bump into them and this and that. Every time you bump into the airplane, you, you, you put a hole in it. So, you gotta be really careful. Jeez. There is not a lot of room. Yeah, can we bring the nose over this way a bit? Just a bit, yeah. We could actually bring the nose over just yeah, a hair. We gotta get it coming this way a little bit. We're definitely gonna wreck something. That was kind of, I think, everybody's head. Fuck it. Pretty damn close, I bet you. Make sure those guys got the tagline on that side. This is concrete pier on the right-hand side, but it's about two feet out of the water. We had about three feet of clearance, so we had a foot. Feel that rock? Yeah, don't move too much. Well, it's just, there's, there's a, a bit of a swell. The one thing that we didn't realize, on the harbor, there's these swells that are about a foot. So every time a swell comes up, the tip float comes down. So now your nice one foot of buffer zone is now zero feet. You don't okay. bounce up and down too much. How much further, Corey? We're almost done. Another two feet. We're safe. And once it went over the concrete pier, it was a huge relief at that point. Let's not touch the door, Corey. Good day, man. Yeah, that was good. That was that was awesome. And tomorrow, they have to get the 215 back out of the marina. Then somehow onto the deck of a massive ship. Something no one's ever tried before. There was a lot, you know, a lot could possibly go wrong with this whole ship idea. But there's a ship waiting for us, let's go do it. 15, 16, this is what gets you fit fast. For the past four months, Mikey McBrien has been working hard to get in shape. Take your chest out a bit more, is that right? You're at 30 seconds, good. Breathe and hold. You're not gonna be sick on me, are you? We'll go for five. Double. Push, push, push. Yeah. Awesome. Woo! 
the sport has no engines. I don't know how we're going to handle it. Today, Mikey and his sister Kathy are out to take on a fresh challenge. Let's see if I can figure it out. You know, it's kind of sad, you know, I'm born and raised in the territories and I've never ever snowshoed. Oh, it's, oh yeah, they're not bad. Kind of feel like you're going to come out of them, though. Whoa, 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 whoa. Snowshoe novice Mikey has signed up for an extreme 45 kilometer relay. There you go. It's going to be a challenge. And it's all timed. And if you go over your time a certain amount, they actually send search and rescue after you. Because literally you're out in the middle of nowhere. We're going to run in these things? As soon as my sister Kathy found out that I was covertly training for, uh, you know, this snowshoe marathon, she kind of, you know, put herself on the team. What do you think, Mike? Like, what's the, what's the feel? My sister-in-law, Sasha McBride there, she just ran a, a, you know, a half marathon there in BC. So she's ready to go. Yeah, I think we made about a half a click. 0.22 of the, of 1K so far, guys. I can't feel my fingers already. And it's only minus 18. It's like you have two big, large clown shoes on and you're trying to walk on an uneven surface. So it's, it's, uh, it's a challenge. Mikey has to be ready to race in less than a month. We go with Mikey. If he survives today. Wait up, guys. Jeez Louise. Ow. <laughs> You want to clean it first? Yeah, we'll clean it first. We'll just start with the inside. Back at the hangar, David Alexander is getting a crash course from co-pilot Graham Ferguson. Just get a layer of foam on there, kind of thing. Yeah. Today, David starts flying with the toughest captain in the company, the boss, Buffalo Joe. You know, honestly, I don't really envy the, the new co-pilots because my father is really hard on them. When you start out, in his eyes, yeah. you, you know nothing, right? You are stupid. We hooked David up with Graham and said, Graham, give him a quick course on how to deal, not with the airplane, but with Joe. Graham shared a cockpit with Joe for two years and learned what Joe likes and what he doesn't. Pretty much got to know what everything in the cockpit does. Don't trail the cowgills until you're, you're cleared for takeoff is what he likes. Okay. Um, if you do it too soon, he'll yell at you. Fine with Joe, I mean, people tell you right away, like, Get ready, because you know you're gonna get blasted. You're gonna yell that. He's gonna be so mad at you. It's just, it, it's pretty nerve-wracking for sure. The words he doesn't like to hear is "I don't know" and "I can't do it." Okay, never say those. Figure it out a way is pretty much the biggest key. Do your best to make him happy. Stay constant. It's a big thing. Like, don't change anything. Yeah. He hates that. He's been doing it the same way for 30 years. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want. So it, there's no new cool pilot that's gonna come in and change the way he does things. So. Yeah. Okay. Not this guy. Yeah. <laughs> David coming in is really got a you know a battle ahead of him, so hopefully he can uh, he can push through. Attitude's everything, man. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, David's had less than a day to prepare, and in more than 30 years, no new co-pilot has ever escaped the wrath of Buffalo Joe. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, no worries. Down in Vancouver, the 215 crew is prepping the plane for its ocean voyage. The shipping company wants the fuel removed. So we got about 2,000 pounds of gas, so we're gonna remove that right now. A necessary precaution before hoisting the plane aboard ship. We'll do our part and hopefully it'll make it safely. It was a first step for everybody, the shipping company, Buffalo Airways, you know, it was uh, really, it had never been done before. We're our last minute uh, sling installation before we head to the ship. <laughs> the sling, or harness, should allow the ship's crane to hook onto the plane. These are amazing, these things. They lift eight and a half tons <laughs> each. Oh, I can't remember, it was over or under. Oh, it's under. Which one's that one going? But the crew has never used this sling before. There's a cable through this shackle or another shackle? and they're about to use it in a way that was never intended. So it's never been tried on an airplane that hasn't been sunk or smashed or crashed or whatever. It's, it's never been done on a perfectly good airplane. Now there's a B on this one. They won't know if it will work without wrecking a perfectly good airplane until the plane leaves the water. And they have to race. The tidal current is turning against them. We're almost out of time. We've got to, it's 9.07. If the current starts to run, we got to put the plane perpendicular to the current. Right now, the tide is calm, but in less than 10 minutes, it will start to go out. 
If they don't get moving fast, they'll be pulling the plane sideways into the flow of the water. It's a 65 foot long, so we don't lose control. The ocean won't wait for us, right? Stupid ocean. Racing the ocean, they need to squeeze through the marina's narrow opening one more time. We're setting sail again. And now, to watch that wing, eh? the tide is starting to turn. Uh, everybody took up their exact same position and role as the previous day. Yeah, this will be, this will be good. We're good over here, boys. Yeah, yeah this is perfect. Just straight now. done. We're out. <laughs> now we got to deal with step three is the sling. For a moment, the crew can sit back and enjoy the view. Cool experience. But only for a moment. Yeah, this is our boat. This is our ship, the Lucas Ollendorf. Like, look at how high he is out of the water. I don't know. Yeah. No, I don't know. <laughs> the big ship. Thank you, Justin. Holy shit. Looking up at this, you know, 40-foot tall ship, it's like, holy crap, man, this is never gonna work. A big ship. On Vancouver's North Shore. About here, fellas. Justin Simley and the water bomber crew were getting their plane set up for a feat no one's ever tried. Hoisting the CL215 onto a cargo ship bound for Korea. How do you want to go at this? This slowly just come in towards the ship. He wants us over this way. Go over a little more. We're just trying to get it into position here. A little bit tricky. But their first challenge, getting the 215 in place without smashing it into the ship. We need you guys on that ship. We need you on that side. He's going to pull us forward. He's going to run out of room. Okay, let's lock it up. Yeah, he's on it. There. Okay, this is good. Okay. Here comes the crane. The hook on the crane is massive. It's like, you know, it's this big chunk of steel. Heavy enough to rip through the plane's thin skin with one single miscalculation. That is a big hook. It's a monster. And the crane operator can't even see the plane. Oh, 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 oh. Watch yourself. You come down just a bit. No, down. Stop. Spread it all out. We'll make sure everything's looking good here. There we go. Everybody get out of the sling. OK, up. Up just a little more. It's good. It's good. A little more. Good. Now that everything's good, eh? Hopefully it'll all work. We'll find out in a few minutes here. But first, one last adjustment. Tori, you ready to put the gear down? This is the final thing. We gotta put the landing gear down because obviously we're a boat right now, so the landing gear's up. So when we go, when we set it on the ship, it's now gonna be an airplane again. You got the battery on? Battery's on. Okay, well. Mains are coming down. Is that gear down or what? Not locked in. Freaking landing gear, right hand side won't lock it. Bring that skiff to the door. Pick up our mechanics. We don't have a right gear in the lock. Thank you. If they can't get the gear to lock, they can't put the plane on the deck. Turn the master on. Master on now? Yeah. You coming in again? But today, Corey's got the magic touch. There we go. Give me the pin. Okay, shut it off. We got it. Yeah. It's locked. Hey. Yeah. yeah. Now the part everyone's been worried about. Yeah, you guys can, you're good to lift. Lifting a delicate, multi-million dollar plane with a completely unproven sling. Oh my God. When you're responsible for doing a job and then you have to hand that responsibility over to somebody else, it's always tough. 
Holy shit. Wow. <laughs> Shit, that might work. <laughs> the quote of the day, shit, that might work. Initially, we're all kind of, you know, like, oh man, this is awesome. That is the coolest thing ever. Yeah, that's out of control. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. But the wind is picking up. Oh my god. Well, that tagline, boys. A little breezy. This wind is uh, gusting. Yeah, a little breezy. Yeah, the flag, you see the flags are. Oh, Mother Nature could really kick us in the ass in about two minutes here. That's our biggest fear, because the, the wind catches it, the fuselage smashed in the side of the ship, it's going to damage it. I guarantee we're going to put a dent in it. See, the wind's here now. Yeah. The airplane started swinging, and like, holy crap, this is not good. They gotta go up above those fences. Oh, they're gonna, they gotta twist it in. Eh? They can't, there's no way. They can't twist it in there, it's too close. <laughs> that ship was designed to carry cargo on top. Well, they had massive steel beams, I guess, every section of the ship. And they wanted to take this airplane and turn it sideways through these beams and swing it in. Then big things don't move nicely. I mean, they always, you're fighting them all the way. Holy f look at how close that is to them. Oh, watch that wind! It was only about six inches or less than a foot from the tail. Oh my god. And it's like, this is getting, you know, too close for comfort. Oh, wait, look, this is a little sketchy. The crew heads aboard for a closer look. Oh, geez, that's close, eh? Oh, 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 oh. Holy f I'm down some more. Beautiful. Beautiful sight. Yeah, she's on now. That's f***ing awesome, eh? We're, we're on the boat, boys. <laughs> Finally, we didn't miss the boat. That was a f***ing absolute complete success. Complete it's miss. not often we get to say we had a success. Guys, we were that far from total failure. There's about a million things that could have went wrong. Everything went right. Our spirits were really high. Everything, everything that day worked out perfect. But now, the crew has to prep their plane for an 8,000-kilometer journey over some of the roughest seas in the world. Flight number one. Flight number one of many. If you don't screw up. At Buffalo, rookie David Alexander is getting ready. Oh, I'm just setting up the uh, cockpit the way um, Joe likes it ready for his first flight as co-pilot with the boss, Buffalo Joe. I know Hay River's not the best right now, so... Not the greatest for your first flight with him, but... Uh... As first officer, he's got a lot on his plate. Clear out there. Yep. Once you get promoted to the first officer on the sked, it's not just jumping a plane, fly a plane, land, right? There's so much more to it. Everything needs to be done to Joe's exacting standards. There's a lobster on board for sure. Yeah, there's a lobster, lobster on board. Graham briefed me on things obviously not to do, but everyone tells you Joe's gonna yell at you your first flight. You know, be ready. There you go, turn, check here and swim to work. Joe, girls, all checks are done. Uh, yeah, all, all kill items are done. To Joe, co-pilots are a necessary evil. I can fly the airplane very, very well by myself. But when I want to fly a DC-3, the regulatory forces say I need a, a co-pilot with me. 416 tower, right turn out, Alpha clear takeoff, runway 16. Clear to go, Alpha 16. Today, Joe's springing a surprise test on the rookie in the right seat. Okay, you're going to be doing a departure. Just threw that in to me. He's like, okay, your takeoff. And I was like, okay. I didn't expect to take off or land for quite a while, actually. Did you expect to fuel yourself? Yeah, I did. I checked out close side at 4 o'clock. Your first takeoff's with the boss. 
So you don't want to screw up, get that little nervous feeling, and then that's it. You'll forget everything, and stuff goes bad from there. Okay, there's your problem. That's fine. On the Yellowknife runway, Buffalo Joe has thrown new co-pilot David Alexander a huge curveball. Okay, there you go. That's to go. Daughter. On his very first flight, David will be handling the takeoff. That's a slow one to now. And Joe's known to be ruthless with his rookie co-pilots. Take your throttles, heels off the floor. Do not touch your brakes. your power to it, just like your car. You don't want to go faster than your car is going with your throttle. I have the throttle. Yeah, throttle. I'll put the weight on the tail. You gotta realize how much weight you have in the airplane. Okay. Is the tail heavy or, or the top front heavy? All right, now, let her fly, let her fly. When she's ready to fly, she wants to fly long before you do. And center on six eights off the only. Graham's last minute tutoring is still fresh in David's ears. I was reaching for something and I was like, oh Graham said not to touch that, so I like pretend to scratch my head or something like that, right? Watch your altitude, watch your head. Okay, below me, 11 off, when we come to last 100, we'll stop six lines. Okay. Check your altimeter. Okay. That's good. It's a flawless takeoff, and even the boss takes notice. I was surprised, or maybe was impressed, that, that he came to the, um, the cockpit well train, having had worked with these last few people that, that had that air of entitlement there. It was nice to know that uh, he was working for what he was getting. 40 minutes later, they make final approach into Hay River. Hey, everyone. Six, eight, we'll be nine, runway one, two, three. Joe's still watching David like a hawk. Okay, now. We got a green light. Where's my green light? Okay, I'll have the lock. Green light. Make sure that light stays green. Okay. But David's already pulled off the impossible. Do you think you remember all the things you're supposed to do? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll be ready for you tomorrow. All right. How do you do, Joe? Good. Good, good. Pretty good. It might be just a few words, but for Joe, they speak volumes. You know, honestly, in the last 10 years, I've never, ever seen my father come back when I said, well, how's the new guy? And the one thing he said, well, he's prepared. And that is probably the best compliment you can probably get. I feel good. I mean, it could have been a lot worse, obviously. So I think he's pretty pleased with how I did so far. He had done a lot of self-study. I put 65 hours on the simulator. And uh, he came uh, very well prepared for the job he was going to do. If he keeps that up, his road to the, uh, the goal bars will be, it'll, it'll be a very smooth road. It went really well. I don't know what I'm doing right, but I better, you know, Keep doing what I'm doing. Hey, Matt, you can grab that ladder. In Vancouver's Burrard Inlet, Buffalo's 215 crew wants to make sure their plane gets to Korea. Did a last kind of a walk around, say goodbye to the, <laughs> the maybe this is the last time we're going to see it, I don't know, maybe the ship sinks. The ship will pass through some of the North Pacific's most treacherous waters. Apparently in rough seas, everything moves. The crew has to get the plane tied down and secure on the deck. There's a welder showed up. If you need a hook somewhere or a tie down point, they just weld it to the deck. They don't screw around. In the waters it will travel, shipping containers have been washed right off the deck. And with the 215, that's a much bigger risk. There's a six five-ton chain, three around each of the landing gear wheels and one on the nose. Then everything else is webbed, so we've got a total of 20 lashings. It's just there's a lot of movement in the wings. Oh, yeah. The ship's moving. We, we think there's going to be quite a bit of movement. 
the airplane, ha it's not really meant to be tied down. You can't cinch them down like you would, you know, like tying your snowmobile down in the back of your truck or something. You want the airplane on the deck tight, but not too tight as to damage it, right? So we tied it from everywhere we could. This is the strongest part of the entire airplane. So if we need any additional lashings, I told the mate that he could put a swing around this part of it. For sure. The airplanes, they're good when they're in the air, but they're not good when they're on the ground. They're very fragile. We've had airplanes before that have sat out in the yard that the rudder locks have fallen off overnight, and the wind blows the rudder around and smashes the shit out of it. And the winds on the ocean will be as bad as the waves. If it gets to that point, like, uh, it'll damage the fuselage. Yeah, it'll be better. If rely on those straps. The crew will go around every day to tighten everything up just like that. The shipping company is not making any guarantees that the plane will make it in one piece. When we get to Korea, I don't know, it's, it's a total gamble. I mean, there could be things busted off that are broken. I mean, we don't know. Done? Yeah, I think, uh, I think that's all we can do at this point. Eh? Just give her a little prayer or something. Buffalo CL215 is ready to set sail on its 8,000 kilometer voyage to Korea. It's good. Right on. But its special passenger will be staying behind. We made an executive decision. This frog's been with us a long time, so we're not going to let it go down with the ship. So it's come with us, and we'll bring it to Korea when we get there. <laughs> this little guy doesn't deserve all that rough work. No, we can't subject him to that. The captain has just one last task before he hands his plane over. Just taking a picture to send to uh, the Koreans to uh, let them know that the airplane is in fact on a boat and on its way. We've still got no money. There's still no pay. So it's almost like you know you're playing poker and you know you you went all in and you're still waiting for the guy to show his cards and he hasn't shown his cards yet. We were kind of on the Mexican standoff with the, the Koreans. My father had to bite the bullet and, you know, take a little bit of trust in, the, in them and put that uh, airplane on the, on the ship and get her sailing. Once the ship's gone, uh, it's really out of your hands. You know, you kind of wonder what kind of shape the thing's going to be in when it gets to the other side. In a few weeks from now, we're going to go to Korea and meet this ship. I mean, <laughs> we don't know. Hopefully it's in one piece. I don't know. The 215 facing a three-week journey and an ocean to cross, hoping is all that Corey and anyone at Buffalo can do.